Virgin Orbit shares are plunging this morning after the company ditched its latest mission to launch a satellite into orbit from UK soil. Virgin Orbit is ceasing operations for, quote, the foreseeable future after failing to secure a funding lifeline. Richard Branson's Virgin Orbit files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection as it fails to secure the funding needed to recover from a January rocket failure. Virgin Orbit started out as a program at Virgin Galactic in 2012, before being spun off into a separate company in 2017. While the former focused on the space tourism market, Virgin Orbit's goal was to build rockets capable of blasting small satellites into space. At the time, this was still a largely untapped market. They were looking at the third and smallest category of satellite delivery into orbit. And what that looks like is satellites that are in maybe the range of like a microwave or an oven that are trying to get into orbit at low cost or at high speed. Virgin Orbit had a lot of promise, yet ultimately couldn't deliver despite making quite a lot of progress over the years. Virgin Orbit was one of the most well capitalized launch companies in existence, especially among startups. In recent years, they are one of only two to have raised over a billion dollars, the other being relativity space. CNBC explores what went wrong with the Richard Branson-backed company that once held so much promise. Virgin Orbit was founded by billionaire Richard Branson, who held a 75% stake in the company. Emirati sovereign wealth fund Mubadala held the second largest stake in Virgin Orbit at 18%. Virgin Orbit targeted the small satellite launch market, catering to customers whose satellites weighed up to 500 kilograms or 1,100 pounds, like small satellite maker OneWeb. Virgin Orbit signed their largest ever customer in 2015 with OneWeb before spinning out. That was for 39 launches with an option for up to 100 more. That's when the company was riding high. They had a major customer, significant backlog, engineering strength, and it looked like everything was going in their favor. And that's when Virgin Galactic sought to spin them off and let them stand as their own company. Virgin Orbit touted its unusual method of launching its rockets, known as air launch, as more flexible than launching from a traditional launch pad, like competitors Rocket Lab, Astra, and SpaceX, among others. The method involved using a modified Boeing 747 jet that Virgin Orbit called Cosmic Girl to carry the company's Launcher 1 rocket to about 35,000 feet of altitude before dropping it. From there, the rocket would fire its engines and continue into space. By launching from an aircraft, Virgin could take off from almost any airport around the world and turn these airports into spaceports. Their last launch was from the United Kingdom. They were also in discussions with Japan and the launch site out of Brazil. So they were offering to different countries the ability to, in a sense, have a sovereign launch capability because the rocket would take off from their home soil. From the government's point of view, you know, if satellites got lost in any conflict in the future, God forbid, um, you know, we're, we're about the only company in the world that could replace them within 24 hours. Um, uh, so they won't have to wait, you know, six months for a land-based land rocket to take off. Air launching satellites was not a completely novel idea in the space industry. Orbital Sciences, now owned by Northrop Grumman, has been launching its Pegasus rocket from a plane since 1990. But Virgin Orbit promised to do this for cheaper. In the summer of 2021, Virgin Orbit successfully completed its first commercial mission, launching seven satellites into orbit for customers including the U.S. Department of Defense, the Royal Netherlands Air Force, and Polish company Sat Revolution. Management was feeling confident and began planning to take Virgin Orbit public. We have a pipeline that is currently at about $4 billion, uh, that spans uh, through about 24 or into 25. So there's an enormous market that is growing in the small satellite market. We've got 300 million in active contracts and LSAs, MOUs, and letters of intent. So with that, we're seeing huge momentum. Unfortunately for Virgin Orbit, its trajectory was about to change for the worse. On December 28, 2021, Virgin Orbit closed the deal with special purpose acquisition company NextGen Acquisition Corp. 2 to go public. Lots of tech startups we're using special purpose acquisition companies as a means to quickly get to market, have an IPO, and raise hundreds of millions of dollars in the process. This, at the surface, looked like a great deal for Virgin Orbit 
and arguably would have been had they raised as much money as they set out to raise. Virgin Orbit's goal was to raise around $480 million, but they ended up raising just shy of $230 million. The result was disappointing for Virgin Orbit, especially considering the fact that sister company Virgin Galactic made a much bigger splash when it went public in 2019. The space tourism company went through the SPAC process much earlier, and the market dynamics, as well as the appetite for risk at the time, was very different than the point at which Virgin Orbit went public, when the SPAC craze had really started to mature and people were becoming much more wary of these kind of risky, low revenue ventures, and as a result, raised much less capital than Virgin Galactic did. The market for rockets that launch small satellites is also getting crowded. Experts estimate that there are between 100 and 120 small rockets in various stages of development around the world as of late 2022. And when you disregard the demand from broadband mega constellations like SpaceX's Starlink and OneWeb, which almost exclusively launch on much bigger rockets, demand for launches of small satellites has remained relatively stagnant since 2017. From 2012 to present, the average size of a communication satellite, or any small satellite, has grown considerably. Communication satellites like Kuiper or Starlink, those are so big that they would at best be able to fit one satellite or none on a launcher one. This trend has led many of Virgin Orbit's competitors to skew towards making larger rockets, Henry says. It's an approach that's proved beneficial for SpaceX, which retired its small Falcon 1 rocket in favor of the larger Falcon 9 rocket, which it uses for rideshare missions, where small satellite companies can hitch a ride with other customers as a more affordable launch option. An advantage of small rockets over larger ones used to lie in their ability to insert satellites into their precise orbits. But space tugs are changing this dynamic. These vehicles can be launched on a large rocket alongside satellites, and thanks to their own propulsion systems, can drop each satellite into its exact orbit, making the prospect of rideshares even more appealing. Launch delays also dogged Virgin Orbit. The company originally hoped to launch its debut mission in 2018, but didn't manage a launch until May of 2020. The demonstration mission failed shortly after the rocket was released. In total, the company launched six missions, four of which were successful and two of which failed, including the latest in January of 2023. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, it appears that Launcher 1 has suffered an anomaly, which will prevent us from making orbit for this mission. Each Virgin Orbit launch cost between 12 and $15 million, though individual customers could pay less if they were launching alongside other companies on the same rocket. While reaching orbit multiple times was a great technical accomplishment, the company was never able to close the business case, both because they needed about a dozen or more launches a year to actually generate meaningful revenue and get close to profitability, as well as start to reap the benefits of actually seeing that marketplace that they were promising come to fruition. Customers grew impatient. Virgin Orbit has had a backlog of business for years, dating back to when they spun out from Virgin Galactic. But a series of delays with getting Launcher One in service resulted in a lot of those customers falling off. Virgin Orbit even sued its largest customer, OneWeb, after the company canceled its launch contract with Virgin Orbit, citing frustration over the high cost of launches. A challenge for the company and for any launch company is having an anchor customer somebody who you can depend on to routinely buy a decent number of launches. Virgin Orbit did not have an anchor customer. In the absence of a large customer, Virgin Orbit had to depend on smaller players like Spire Global, but these were not enough to keep up with the company's mounting expenses and the rate at which it was burning cash. One of the more damning details of the past two years has been the amount of money the company spent on SGNA costs. If you look at their annual reports, you'll notice a steady climb in the amount the company spent on personnel and headcount. They were adding staff to their payroll at a rate that was much, much faster than the revenue they were bringing in. And when you see these two trends paired with a underwhelming launch rate, it did look like a recipe for disaster. 
Henry says that Virgin Orbit did try to diversify its revenue stream. The company made investments in several space ventures, including satellite businesses Hypersat, Sat Revolution, and Horizon Technologies, among others. But they were all too early stage to meaningfully contribute to Virgin Orbit's needed launch volumes and revenue. Virgin Orbit's latest financial results seem to be the last nail in the coffin for the company. It reported an adjusted EBITDA loss of $42.9 million for the third quarter of 2022, compared to a loss of $32.8 million for the same period the year prior. Virgin Orbit's cash reserves were also dwindling, fast. The bad news seemed to snowball from there. Virgin Orbit is furloughing nearly all of its employees and pausing operations for a week as it looks for a funding lifeline. Shares tumbling on that news. For the next two weeks, Virgin Orbit sought out investment that would help it survive, but to no avail. With Richard Branson refusing to finance the company any further after injecting $25 million in new funding in November, Virgin Orbit was desperate. Virgin Orbit's stock had been on a steady decline ever since the company signed its deal to go public via SPAC on August 23, 2021. On April 4, 2023, Virgin Orbit filed for bankruptcy. In a statement, Virgin Orbit CEO Dan Hart said, we believe that the cutting-edge launch technology that this team has created will have wide appeal to buyers as we continue in the process to sell the company. At this stage, we believe that the Chapter 11 process represents the best path forward to identify and finalize an efficient and value-maximizing sale. If somebody looks at this and chooses to buy them out of bankruptcy, they might look at it as a billion-dollar asset gone on sale. Perhaps a company that is not interested in spending a billion of their own dollars will instead be willing to spend tens of millions of dollars to get what would essentially be a, a discount launch services provider. Experts see particular potential for Virgin Orbit in the defense space, as Virgin's air launch system allows for a quick tactical response, something that's a national security priority, according to Henry. Finally, if Virgin Orbit were to reemerge, it could be with a new focus on hypersonics. Launcher 1 reaches speeds of Mach 5, or about 3,800 miles per hour, and could help with weapon systems development, including acting as a target for hypersonic missiles. But even if Virgin Orbit were bought out of bankruptcy, experts say it would be tough for the company to regain its talent in a space market that's becoming ever more competitive. I think that this will be a warning sign to other launch companies to avoid the same mistakes they're going to need to be aggressive in terms of hitting their launch schedules and keeping their costs under control. Virgin Orbit's legacy within the space industry is a story that's too often told, where there are exciting or even innovative new technologies, but that does not make necessarily for a smart or financially sound business. And that's going to be the resounding message that people should take away from the story of this company.